Hey guys, it's me, it's me, it's Michael B. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Just an impromptu stream. You guys know I'm a pinball channel now. <laughs> That's been the running joke, but I have been very interested in pinball the last little while. I picked up a Godzilla premium table. I may have picked up a classic table recently. That's why they call me Mikey Two Pins. But anyways, I have been following a lot of pinball stuff. One of the tables that was just recently announced was the Venom table. We got to watch Jack Danger and uh, the group from Stern play some of it last night. I had some early thoughts that were completely wiped away by last night's stream. Some of my friends are actually at San Diego Comic-Con right now. Cool toys there. Our buddies B-Kong and Console Kits are also there. And hopefully they're going to join me on stream. They're going to try, they told me. So we'll see about that. Let's talk about some Venom Stern Pinball. And we'll see if we can get some gameplay live from the floor and see what these guys think in person. Looks like a very cool game. Anyways, hopefully we have a little bit of fun tonight. If you're into pinball, the stream's for you. If you're not into pinball... Thanks for being here anyways. Anyways, guys, this is an impromptu Thursday night episode of Chill and Chat with Michael B. All right, guys, so I'm going to try to bring this guy in. I got a black screen so far. Let's see if it works. Keep trying, my man. That's the fun of this. Reception is apparently terrible, but we're going to keep trying. Or we'll do nothing. I'm going to bring the chat up on the screen and say hello to everybody while we wait to see if these guys can connect. I see Matt Astro Gaming. Hello there, you sexy mofo. Hello there to you too. Conti Dindas here. He voted. Donovan Kingle. Hey there, Michael B in chat. Hope all are doing well tonight. Can't wait to see how this goes. Me too. Uh, Scott James says, looks like Skittles vomit. It's very colorful. Very busy play field. No video feed. Let's see if we can bring them in. No video feed's not good. <laughs> Rights Retrocades here. What's happening, my man? Put the chat up on the screen. We're, we're trying. We're trying here. <laughs> it just keeps going out. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I don't know if this is intentional or not. We'll see. Let's see. Uh, anyways, guys, just give me a second here now. B just keeps popping in and then popping out. I don't know what's happening. Anyways, I promise you, we have somebody trying to get in. I'll wait. I'm not going to bring that up on screen anymore unless they can get into the feed. But we are started. We are going here. And at some point, <laughs> hopefully we get B and Justin live from the Comic-Con floor. But so those of you guys watched Jack Danger's Dead Flip stream last night. If you watched on Twitch, it's one of the very few times I've ever sat down and watched a full Twitch stream actually on my TV. I couldn't wait to see what the table looked like. And I was surprised by how much I actually liked it. Uh, for those of you who don't know, let me see if I can bring the table back up. <laughs> Even Wi-Fi sucks in California, I guess so. <clears throat> B didn't pay his cell phone bill this month, but uh, let me bring this up for the people that haven't seen it yet. Stern Pinball Home, we've got Venom. So guys, here is Foo Fighters. James Bond in production, but we're going to go to the games. And here's the new one, Venom. For those of you guys who haven't seen it, we've got the game trailer. There's Venom. There is the, the premium edition, and there is the limited edition. I know Patrick P-Dubs, uh, he's actually thinking about getting this. P-Dubs is more of a classic pinball guy, but he's really considering getting the pro version. Oh, we got somebody. Whoa, here we go. B, what's happening, my brother? Yo, what is going on? I had to step outside of the convention because, unfortunately, in the ballroom where the pinballs are at, there's really crappy reception. I was going to say a bad word, but let's just say it. it's really shitty. So you're going to get a shitty experience if you walk in there. We can go, 
but you know, I sent you a few pictures and some videos and I can also do that and kind of, you can upload them. But you know, I did see some other fun folks making content in there. Jack Danger was streaming. I got Jack Danger's autograph. I got Gary nice. Stern's autograph. I was, I was acting like a fanboy today. Actually, I bought a Stern t-shirt. I went to Brian Eddy, uh, Gary Stern, Seth Davis, and, um, uh, what's your McCall? Jack Danger autographs. I was like, all right, I'm slowly going to fanboy right now. Um, but yeah, we can go in and check it out, but you've shown some pictures, right? Uh, well, I was just showing the, uh, web page there showing people the table. I was going to bring up the stream, but now that you're here, take off your pants. <laughs> Something about taking off the pants. I don't know how that reaction is going. Do you want me to try to go inside? Yeah, we can give it a go. And if you go black again, we'll just pop back. All outside. Right. Let's try to give inside, it a go. Before you go inside though. First impressions of Venom so far. Like when I first saw the table and I saw the preview mm -hmm. videos, I said, that's a very bare table. It didn't look like there was a lot on the play field. Very busy play field uh, with the art and all that stuff. But then when you got up to the ramps and stuff up at the top, it didn't look like there was much going on. Kerry Hardy just popped mm -hmm. in here. <laughs> and I know Kerry said originally. Kerry Hardy. About the flow there. Yeah. Yeah. So my first impressions, I played both the pro and the premium. I spent more time on the premium so far. And yes, the play field does change when you select your character. So I, the best way to describe it is that there's like, you know, the ramp shot on Godzilla that scoops back. So there's like this like inverse ramp that kind of loops back and it changes from that into a scoop shot, depending on who you play. And um, so the premium is pretty fun. I was actually doing pretty well. The multi-ball lock feature is also something that's really cool. So I've enjoyed playing that. It was shooting it pretty well. Um, but there are some times where I'm doing stuff and nothing is happening. There's a, uh, maybe the code is still new, um, but I was yeah. having trouble making sure that I was hitting a couple of things. Um, but I, I enjoyed it. I was beating up Justin console kits. I was playing with another guy, a three pair, uh, doing a three set. Yeah, I was, I was getting like 60 million, 50 million the first time playing it. But right now, I think the high scores are in the billions already. Somebody's already cracked the code in that game. Um, the other really cool thing is that Insider Connected is now absolutely required because when you sign in, it tracks your progress. Like whether you play at a home or in a store, you level up. So it's really fun to see that in addition to achievements. So I think that's a pretty cool feature. So I, I was watching Carrie's Am video I frozen earlier still? today. No, no, you're not frozen. You haven't been frozen the whole time. It, it's a little jumpy, though. I'm going to be honest with you. But uh, I was watching Kerry's video earlier today, and he talked about after watching the gameplay last night when uh, Deadfoot played. And uh, what he said was it seemed like it was uh, this faux flow, like where these balls were like firing out and stuff like that. So you're saying it was still slow at times going from motion to motion. You didn't notice that, how it was just kind of firing out, like he said? Yeah, it's it was hard to hear the question, but like you're saying about the ball lock and it like shooting down really fast. Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He talked about um, that. Seemed like it was a really fast game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would I would say that that definitely feels about right. So it's a fast game coming that way. Um and but yeah, let's see if we can get it. Can, am I am my camera right. switched around? Yep, your camera switched around. All right. All right. All right, we're going to try to get back in. The nice lady let me back into the convention center. So um, I'm sorry, apologize if reception goes terrible because you only get 4G reception. I even tried asking the media people at Stern if I can borrow their Wi-Fi, and they said, no, I don't count as a media oh, yeah. comic person. So, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't big shot enough. But, you know, Jack Danger can stream on, on Twitch, apparently, but you can't Wi-Fi password no you can't have other content creators do that stuff all right you ready you froze so hard <laughs> am i am i back oh here we go You're am back. i back yep all right we're we're in so the man in the middle that's seth davis that's the president there's brian eddie right there there's jack oh danger so those are the people that yep. are streaming probably want to watch for some better quality content but here is all the Venoms that are here. There's about 12 Venom machines here, uh, and then 12 other pinball machines. Foo Fighters, Godzilla, I saw Jurassic Park, Bond, and Avengers Infinity Quest, and a Star Wars. Very nice. So, so those are all the things that I got going on. 
Um, I'm sorry if I can't hear you. It's getting really loud. But uh, here is an example of. B is the best worst on site <laughs> correspondent. You guys may remember B was at San Diego Comic Con last year. I think we had him on uh, Super Game Room Dudes, and uh, he was showing off some stuff. But unfortunately, the reception's not so good. <laughs> Let's see if we can get him to come back. Anyways, guys, so right now, San Diego Comic-Con, this is B-Kong. Justin Console Kits is around here, too. There he is, Justin Console Kits. Yes, there he is. He's here. I'm here. I, I don't know if you can hear us, but what's your first impressions of Venom? Uh, it's a million times better than James Bond. <laughs> okay. Um... Yeah, I think it's going to make it high on the leaderboard of the best games of all time. You think so? I think Stern just keeps knocking it out of the park. Like, it'll be really interesting to see if how it is with Foo Fighters. Like, they're very different games. So, yeah. Uh, it's kind of like not a very good comparison. But playing a lot of the other different pinball machines that are Marvel-like, and I don't know, Infinity Quest is a lot of fun. It's got a lot of fun gadgets on there. I don't know where I'd rank Venom compared to Infinity Quest. And I'm really worried that we're here, we're at Comic-Con, and everyone is freaking here. We've met Gary, we met, well, who's the dude? That Seth Davis. Seth Davis, you know, and then uh, Brian Eddy, you know, like, Jack Danger. We're all here, so it's like, we're getting like shots in the arm of Stern directly, and it's like, are we like hyping up Venom because like- Everybody's here? It's a great game. Like, you think so? It is great game. Is it great game? Okay. All right. I had fun because I beat you guys on it. But yeah. Okay. All top right. three things about the game that are really okay. I can only do three. That's it. Okay. Filter it in your head. Okay. Three. All right. Am I saying it or are you saying it? I'll, I'll, I'll go with one. You okay. Go with another. Or whatever. Okay. Okay. It's really cool about how you hit the pinball up on one of the one of one of the targets that you're going for, and there's a ball kind of waiting to shoot. Your eyes are following the ball. You're following your ball. So you hit that target, target. You you go up that. What happened is all of a sudden a ball is shooting at you. It's like no, I'm taking that ball, and here's your ball, and that's pretty exciting. I've I've lost a ball or two for Sue. So okay, so I'm back around. Justin showing me. So yeah, for me, um, I really like the shot that kind of loops around like you were saying uh, i've been able to do a loop shot a couple of times then it hit the clock tower to be able to get the um the multiplier but the, i i think the the lock mechanism for multi-ball is one of the most unique things i've seen normally when you do a multi-ball once you unlock it it's two or three balls and then that's pretty much it but here you can save your ball up to i think six balls so if you're dangerous and you want to gamble you can hold your multi-ball and keep adding more to it. So I thought that was a fun element to see. Um, so I think that's probably my favorite component of the game. And I, I think you can do it on both the pro and the premium, uh, but the pro definitely has a visual better play field. The pro, I mean, the premium, I mean, the pros like lacking in that horseshoe area is that just looks very, I would almost say like home pin edition than anything. Yeah. Yeah. Let me go with one. Okay. okay so are we still, still uh, live and everything? Yes. Are we still yeah, here? Still Can you still live. hear us? We're still live. Yeah. Okay. We're live. So baby. the next thing that I love about the feed is uh, really they keep on talking about that. Change your host or pick your host, change the game. So with that particular mechanic, what happens is at the very beginning you get an option to play as four different characters. And so each one of those characters, as you're switching between those characters, you actually see the game shift. The game moves around the different uh, um, mechs will move their positions to kind of show like this is a thing that you're going to play. So you put those together and you're like, man, when I sit down to play the game, I have to choose the different hosts. And when I choose that host, I get the opportunity to like play that, which has different achievements to go for. And when you go to your ball two, you start over and you can, you can pick a different host and kind of start from a different uh, starting point. And so that's another unique thing about Venom. Yeah. I mean, they've kind of done things similar to that Infinity Quest or like uh, Guardians has that where Guardians, you, you pick your character 
And then, um, yeah, so it, it's not 100% unique, but the way they did it where it ties into the mech, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, very sure. Know. Do you I know. Another one, B? Um, I could say between the pro and the premium, I like the pro artwork better. Yeah. Yeah. Why did so they do that? I know. So here's the premium artwork on this side over here, and then over here we got the pro artwork. No, I mean if you can still see it, pro artwork is right here. Premium artwork is over there. I don't know. I think it just looks much better. So Mike, I don't know if you caught any of that. Do you have any questions or things you want to see? Oh, yes. Yeah, so many. So uh, one, the artwork, I know a lot of people are saying that. Do you know when the Kith version is coming out? The what? Oh, the, the Kith, Kith thing. The Kith collab what? version. Oh, the Kith version of the Venom pinball machine? <laughs> uh, so they did their turn. I have so many words on what they did. But hey, we got our good friend here. He's a fan of the channel. We're, you're on Michael B. The Game Genie's channel right now. Yeah. This oh, is Agent what? Flash right oh, here. So, hey, fan of Home Arcade, pinball machine guy. We got a Venom Premium all to ourselves now. So, we're going to hang out here for a little bit and see if we can play. So, show you some gameplay as you can see it for self. So, Michael B., what do you think of the play field now that you see it? So after I saw the play field, I mean, I still think it's very, very plain, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It looks like there's a lot of long shots, long, interesting shots. Uh, the skill is all in the long shot, and it's all about comboing the ramps, and uh, that seemed very exciting to me. What's the doppelganger uh, surprise attack like during gameplay? How do you explain that? I don't know if that looks better. I had my camera flipped earlier, so hopefully that looks better now. Um, yeah, that that but, looks great. Can you hear me? Uh, console kits is. Right, no, ah, even log in, but that's okay. All right, just play it. Here we go. I don't yeah, think you have to keep tapping it. So just <laughs> go to sleep. <laughs> While they're doing that, we got a $4.99 super chat here from Ezekiel, the Chicago Retro Ranger, one of the nicest guys in the community. Thank you very much. So, hey, Mike B., so I take it you are making an order on Venom. No, uh, I don't know about that. I just I just bought my second pinball machine. Uh, I might not be uh, in the market for another one soon, but I, I have to say I'm surprised by how good this looks. I know, Paul Lady. I, 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 <laughs> we're trying our best here, brother. Thank you very much for the super chat, Ezekiel. It went into this loop and it stopped there and then, like it didn't do anything. It's with the voltage though. It's probably why it's open. Yeah. Drop a ball. Yeah, J cuts. The ball got stuck. Right. We're playing a premium oh. and it just didn't kind of like register. Well, that's it, guys. The premiums don't work. <laughs> Can we do a restart? With that, the restart? We're going to do a restart. Okay. So, okay, the code is a little premature. Hey, let go of the ball now? Yeah, let go of the ball. All right. Let's see. Okay. All right. I'll play our one now. Kevin B is always licking the pinball glass. So, guys, can you hear me at all? I, I wonder, is the choose your host mechanic similar at all to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from Stern? How do you pick the different turtles? Ball well, safe, ball safe. I'm still in it. You can't hear me. <laughs> no. All right, Mike. I don't know if you can still hear us. What do you want to see? Do you want to see more gameplay? Do you want us to walk around? Yeah. Why don't you guys walk around a little bit? Can I? Can you hear me? Can I ask I you? I can some hear questions? you now. Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. So first off, what's the doppelganger surprise attack like? How does that feel while you're playing? Yeah, the doppelganger. It's this guy, right? That pops out. And so yep. I'm sorry, right here. This guy. So when it pops out, there's three targets to hit that light up. And so once you hit the target that's lit up, uh, I think it was worth like 
750,000 yeah. points. Like, Sometimes it's, a, one it's million. like a million points. It didn't feel like it was worth the effort, but it just kind of swings out and you hit it and you kind of like activate it a couple of times. It's a neat feature, but it's not like blow your mind feature that I yeah. can tell. Yeah. So, uh, Kerry Hardy mentioned it here. I'm going to bring it up really quick. Uh, I asked this question. Can you still hear me? Um, yes, I can the, hear you. One of the things I thought was very similar was the choose your host. Seems yes. a lot like uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, how you had to choose your turtle. But Correct. like he's saying, it didn't change the physical aspect of the game. didn't change yeah. the game. But does it seem like that at all? Yeah. Um, so the next time we start a ball, we'll go through it so you can see it. Um, yeah. Sorry, I don't know. I went away for a second. But the next time we start up a ball, this scoop shot right here, this is the mechanism that changes as well as this ramp right here. So there's two things on the play field that changed. This ramp right here, it's like this yep. vertical kind of scoop that comes up this ramp and then it changes and it lifts up and then it becomes like a scoop shot instead. So, um, and then this one also kind of scoops into this back area or it becomes a ramp to come up this back area too. So on the pro, this whole area is just a giant horseshoe and it looks really plain. Like here's the pro version right over there. And it's just a little bit plain and without any of the changing mech. So that's the pro. This is the premium. All right, we're gonna go. Are we gonna change it through? All right, so we're gonna change through so you can see what it does. Go ahead. Okay. So that's one. That's two. That's three. All right. So those are the different versions. So that's what it changes. So change it one more time. So as each character you select, keep changing it. One more time. Yeah, so it's just changing those two mechs on the play field. So hopefully that gave you a better understanding of, of what happens when it changes. Now, they also have different <laughs> skill shots as well once you change Correct. characters, right? Correct. Yeah. Yep. So I haven't gotten that deep to know what each one is, but yes, I, I can assume that they do. Okay, we got a couple super chats I want to get through here, B. Uh, okay. Jeff Walsh says, $5, very interested, but I'll wait to see how it holds up on resale value. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I think there's fans of it. The The IP has been really popular with Marvel, and so I, I think there's a lot of fans. And the other thing, too, is that it's not just Venom. You got, like, Venom Hulk, Wolverine, uh, you know, uh, the different types of Spider-Man characters. So there are some yeah. other Marvel characters that might draw people into it. So, All right, we got another super chat. People are trying to put money together for you to upgrade your phone plan, B. It's not my super phone chat. plan. It's just the, the Wi-Fi in conventions is terrible. But I'll take it. I'll take it. Four ninety nine. Yeah. Can you help me upgrade I got to hold up on my That's best, best worth correspondent with my shitty Wi-Fi. I'm sorry. I tried. I tried. Uh, so Stringer Films also says two dollars from the look of the video. I guess it's waterproof. So yeah, I don't know. Fun, 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 fun. All right, here's another element to show you. So this is the level up bar right there that you can see. So console kit is only at level three. Agent class is at level thirty-four, and this is cumulative. So he's been playing all day, and he's leveled up to thirty-four. And this purple bar shows your progress so that experience points once you get to a certain level uh they were saying that's what unlocks like the extra characters you can like either have them play so yeah what do you say what do you, what, do you, what happens when you level up so like so so i heard that when you level up um it kind of unlocks like the wolverine the, uh -huh. the venom hulk or the yeah Captain america that you can choose them as characters too yeah, beyond these three i think it sticks to your account okay like your insider account yeah so i think that would be instead of these are the four characters you can start off playing as but yeah down here right there's three other characters there's uh captain america <laughs> Then there's a uh, Hulk and Wolverine. So I see what you mean that you can level up with them. Okay. So B, B, I don't know if you watched uh, Jack's stream from last night, Dead Flip stream, but uh, once you unlock Hulk, Wolverine, and Captain America, they're permanently yep. unlocked on the table. You don't have to do it again. Oh, really? Okay. So anybody can unlock it, and then everybody will play it, can play, enjoy them. Is that what you're saying? I see. Well, I think I, I think I'm not a hundred percent sure if it's anybody on the table, but I think as long as you have your Stern Insider connected, wherever yeah, you go, it's, it's unlocked for you for you to play. But I'm not sure about everybody. So yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. So um, okay. uh, very quickly, we uh, got a question here for Justin. I already know the answer. Uh, Justin bought his pins through flipping out, and he actually dealt with the straight down the middle guys. So yes. Zach and Greg. So what's the question? Wanted to know where Justin bought his uh, pins to. Flipping out. Oh yes, yes, yes. He got he got great service from flipping out. Justin, they want to hear your flipping out story about what they did for your food. Oh, yeah. All right, go ahead. Yeah, so basically flipping out is pretty off, pretty awesome. So um, so here's the, the breakdown of the story. So I got the Foo Fighters machine. My first yeah. indication that something was wrong was the back box wouldn't go up all the way. But in actuality, there was major things wrong with it. So when I emailed them, they said, give me pictures of everything. So I, when I opened up the machine, I hadn't actually lift the table yet. But I lift up the table, it wouldn't open up. And so uh, I finally was able to get it to open up, and I and I got inside. And I realized there was damage. All right. So there was a little bit of damage in the back, and so it was making it really tight. So long story short, I reached out to them and showed them all the pictures, and they're like, "We're gonna take care of you." They shipped me a new Foo Fighters Premium, which they said this was like on the weekend, and they said we'll ship it Tuesday, and I got it Thursday, and then on Friday they had someone come pick up the old one. And I did, it was hassle free. All right, all right, you're you're, you're showing a lot for flipping out pinball. We That's get right. it. They did a good job taking care of you. That's right. Good job. All right, hey, but speaking of being stern shills, uh, what do you say? Do you want us to go try to talk to Brian Eddy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> How many people are watching right now, Mike? Uh there's uh, like seventy. Seventy people. All right, we'll go walk over to Brian Eddy and Seth Davis and see if we'll ask her any questions. You ready? Oh my God, what do you yes. want to tell, ask tell him? him tell like me the question you want to ask. Watching. Tell him it's All right, 7, what, what do you, What's the first question you want to ask him so I can be prepared? Can, can I can I come work at Stern? Can we, can <laughs> we be shields for them? Yeah, this person here wants to work at... What does it take to work at Stern? That's actually a really good question yeah. here. Yeah, we'll see if he's open to it. All right. All right, this is their their kind of streaming zone over there. Yeah. What's the, do you want to go to that? Yeah. Don't... Don't interrupt him, man. I feel terrible. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just fanboy. I already got his autograph, so you know. No, they're they're deep in conversation right now. I don't want to bother them. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. Bother them. We would just be jerks. Oh, respect. Yeah. All right. Let us know. You want to go hang out with Cool Toy? He's here. He's here. Yeah. Yes. Let's go find Cool Toy. See cool Toy. You want to see Cool Toy? Yes. Where was he? All dog. right. All right. I, let's see. You guys I'm find surprised dog. that you guys can still hear us. All right, this is the other side of the pinball. He might have left already. Yeah. Oh, no. I think Smash JT was here a little bit ago. Is that what it was? Smash oh. JT? Yeah, I think he left with his family already. Yeah, we yeah. saw Colton earlier. That was fun. Oh, yeah, there so, it is. So, what's up? Really quickly, we got a super chat here from Man Asher Gaming said... 199 US dollars. Tell them I said thanks for the live stream. They're very appreciative. Uh, Matt Astra is very appreciative that you guys did this here today. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, sorry the stream quality could not be better, but here we are. It is what it is. I really appreciate this too. You you guys know how much I, I really wish I could have came. I'm like, oh, you have no idea. Yeah. So, forget Texas Pinball Festival next year. San Diego Comic Con is where we're going, right? I really want to go to Texas pinball. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. The nice thing about this is that this place is still very low key yeah. compared to like the main hall. So the main hall of people, they don't know about this secret stern pinball place. So there's not a lot of people here. So you can enjoy the pinball, be very kind of incognito. I just found a problem. Yeah. You want to see it? Yeah. Come this way. All right. All right, well, you guys do that really quickly. It's over. Okay. Right here. 0% interest financing. Nationwide shipping. Orange County pinball. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. 0% interest. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, it's the show special. You got to support them, right? So that's what it is so yeah if you're able to get onto the high leaderboards i believe they also had like a little tchotchke pin thingy oh, wow. um all right i'm gonna do it i'm just gonna walk over to brian eddie and say hello no, you ready no, no, B, don't do that don't do that b why <laughs> i feel terrible 
Yeah. Yes, I'd be embarrassed. Tell him I have seven thousand people watching. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Brian, no, 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 would no. you mind if I ask you a few questions? Are you open to it? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Awesome. Okay. So awesome. Great. So I'm actually it's live crazy. right now on a YouTube channel called Michael B the Game Genie. All He's right. a Canadian awesome. pinball fan. Absolutely loves pinball. Okay. Uh, Brian Eddie's here. Mike, what do you want to say to Brian Eddie? <laughs> this is him right here, by the way. All right. There All right, he Mike. is. <laughs> Yay. We'll we'll, hey, we'll turn around so he can actually see you. So, Mike, what do you want to ask Brian Eddy? Um, he jokingly well, asked how he could work at pin at, at <laughs> Stern. So what does it take that in terms of working there? Like, what does it take to work in pinball? Make a pinball. Make a pinball. Is that that, that easy? Simple. Yeah. That make simple. A make a pinball make it machine. In, show it to him. There it is. Okay. So yeah. here we are. Uh, there's Mike right there. Sorry about that. Hey, All right. Uh, there you are. Brian, cool. Brian, so Brian, what else do you want to ask Mike? Me. If you can hear me, what's your favorite thing you got to do with this table? What's your favorite what, element? Yeah, so what's you your favorite thing you got to do by time? making Venom? I think it was the speed of the game. Yeah. I, it's it's addicting. How quickly the ball comes back to you and that you're yeah. always, in, always in the battle. That was by design to be able to yep. just keep it up. Just like Venom, moving. man. Fast oh. moving character yeah, yeah. that ties right into that world. That's true. And, and it feels good. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I was playing the premiums and the pros. When you design both versions, right. do you try to make them like how similar to try to make them versus like different? I feel like different games. Yeah, we try to make the rules similar between both of them. Mm -hmm. So it's really just playfield features. If you like lots of toys and yeah. things on them, yeah. right? That's the premium. Um, on this case, the pro actually plays even faster than the premium. Yeah, premium is already fast. Exactly. So if you like a fast game, then the pros there too. Yeah, very cool. Nice. Did you have another question, Mike? No, I just wanted to say thank you for everything you've done for pinball, sir. Yeah, he just wants to say thanks for everything that you've done. I'm like listening in for it. Uh, awesome. I know. One question. All right, go ahead. So you, you made a lot of different machines in your lifetime. So besides Venom and Venom, it's great. What is the one machine that you love? Sure, you get asked that. Like, is yeah. it hard to pick between your kids? It's basically yeah, yeah, all your babies. babies. It's like right. your favorite child. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I like them all for different reasons. Yeah. You know, Attack from Mars, I really like because of the theme. Mm -hmm. It just pokes me, I guess, in that whole March and Spiffy things. Yeah. Medieval Madness, obviously, is great. Yeah. Picking up on all that humor and such. Mm -hmm. um, but I really am liking the new games that start to stranger things. I think some of these big licenses, Mandalorian, mm -hmm. Venom, right? It's really fun working with the studios doing some things. Yeah, the sand base out there, people love it. All right. well, thanks for the time. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you. No, I got no, his no. autograph. I'm fanboying right now. So B, one we got more to hang question. Out. B, one, oh, one more, more question. question. What's the question? Brian, what will it take for me to get Stern convinced to bring Stranger Things out of the vault? <laughs> <laughs> he wants to know what it would take for Stern to bring back Stranger Things out of the vault. He really wants a Stranger Things. Oh, is that yeah, really hard to get? Yeah. Right so is that something that might be happening? Might like be happening He said there might be something <laughs> happening this year. All right. <laughs> Yeah, we know another a home arcade company that likes to maybe just re-release their best hits. And so Stern Pinball popularity, I think, has really yeah. gotten a lot more popular the past couple of years. We I, bring some yeah, the Vault Edition. So we could see a Stranger Things Vault. He's not saying anything. Look at his face. He's not saying anything. That makes me so yeah. happy. <laughs> not impossible. All right, well, thank you again. Appreciate All right, it. Thank you. All right, we'll be here. All right. You got to see and talk to Brian Eddie. That's cool, That's right? so cool. Yeah. I, I, All right. I Hopefully you enjoyed that. All right. What else do we need to do? I think we need to play more games. Yeah. yeah we need to play more games. Um, is there you any guys, final questions or things you want to know before we sign off, Mike? I, I got I got some super chats I got to get through. Uh, Stringer Film says $2. Venom Premium looks more fun than Godzilla, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Jeff, oh, Walsh, Jeff Walsh, $2. Leveling up we also it, makes the process easier to beat. Yeah. If you hold those two buttons, it resets. The so, oh. left flipper, and then it should reset again. Yeah. And here's the question I wanted to get to uh, Stringer. If you watched Dead Flip's uh, stream last night, ask if Venom will be at Southern Fried Gaming Expo. Venom is going to be at Southern Fried Gaming Expo. You're going to get to play it at Southern Fried. No worries. They're taking it there. All right. Switching the back camera back one last so, time. Uh, we yeah. have a Venom Pro right yep. here. So this is a pro machine, but there's no ball. Is that what happened? 
All right, so there's a vending machine, but there's no ball. Maybe we can find a guy and have him fix it, and we can have him open the play field to check it out. That'd, That'd be, cool. be cool. Yeah. Yeah. You want to go find him? Yeah. Uh, it's the guy with the long hair, the one that taught you how to play. That guy. That guy. What's that? That guy with the stern shirt. Uh, yeah. We're trying so, to see right now the pro pinball machine uh, doesn't have a ball in it. But if you can see the play field, this is the part I was telling you about, right? It's just a horseshoe instead of a mech. Yep. There's a mech that's missing right here that would move it around. So again, like Brian Eddie was saying, it just plays so much faster because you're missing it. I would say from a physical standpoint, I got to be honest, though. It looks like a home pinball machine. It looks like <laughs> the version of it is just a little metal ramp. And then yep. it for for a pro version of a machine i would have liked to have seen more toys in it because it, it looks a little bit cheesy without the, the side of it but from a gameplay standpoint it plays fast but yeah that's just my opinion yeah yeah i think i think carrie meant this for brian eddie but i'm gonna ask you b ask him if the yeah. pro is still good without the mechs is the pro still good without the mechs uh i i don't know i would i would say not as good it plays fast if you like fast pinball tables but I was just shooting this horseshoe from left to right over and over again versus in the premium, you would hit it and it would loop up and have the bar across. You would also hit it. And then like, it would just, you would feel like you're doing more things behind the scenes. Um, so yeah, the pro version is just, I think the look of it is just, you can tell it's not as, it plays fast. Yes. But yeah, and this is really cool, right? The carnage being pumped up to the bottom, right? It is what it is in terms of the pro versus the premium. The pro does have some badass artwork, though. Look at that. Pro artwork versus the premium artwork. So, I mean, it has that going for it. But, um, yeah, that's the issue so far. Let's see if we can find the tech to open it up. Would you advise people to buy the pro cabinet and the premium and then just put the play field in the premium? <laughs> just put the play field to swap out the art? I don't know. <laughs> I know you can swap out back glasses, but I think it's super hard to swap out. Of freaking anything else uh all right let's go look at the uh, score play fields no where's that other tech guy he's not here there's good old godzilla and stern pimp do you do you think right. you know you know how when new pinball tables come out everybody gets that new buyer's excitement and yeah uh, who fighters, yeah yeah who fighters dethrone godzilla do you think there's a chance Venom could reach that plateau as well from what you've played so far? Um, I mean, Justin thinks it, it could be top 10, but um, I think I think Stern's popularity is, is just at its high, and it'll just be... One. You think so? Because, okay, so I think the premium is really good. But yeah. Pro, once operators start getting pros, they'll start realizing they like, just got a home in the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> among their lineup. Yeah. And so that may... I don't know. Like, it's very possible that the premium may get a high score, but the pro might actually get a low score. That, I yeah. think the premium will still bring it up into the top 10. For, from a replay value, too, I have a game like Star Wars that also changes characters, and that one just changes your scoring ability to play. But it doesn't change the game that much, and that's exactly what the pro does. You just have a different character that does stuff, and if scoring is still your main objective, you're probably going to pick one of the ones that you use, and it, there's not that much like, I'm going to try this character. I can score points this way. The premium gives you a little bit more options, but I, I think the novelty of character change games kind of does wear off eventually, and you just find the one that you get used to, and you go with it. I'm a loop guy because it's the first one that shows up, and when I played this one, I just want to plunge, and I'm usually like, 75% of the time, people are going to play the first character that's there, not even know there's a difference to change your character. So, uh, B, if you can ask Justin, I know Justin was thinking about maybe picking up a Gem James Bond Pro. Has his opinion changed? Is he now looking full on in Venom? Uh, he said that you, you were considering a James Bond Pro at one point? Yeah, like, uh, so the James which, Bond Pro yeah. is a more classic machine. Right? Okay. So the ball goes up and it almost feels like those old solid state machines where it's more flat and the ball is going to kind of bounce around and then kick some bumpers. And then it's just a different style of game. And so that's the type of game that you may want in your game room for diversity. Yeah. Right? So if you have all these faster games that are more modern, the James Bond Pro kind of brings you down to more of a classic yeah. style game. If you, you know, ask Brian like Eddie, Stern, if it's new, but it kind of feels like more an 80s, 90s game. Let's go ask if there's a tech. 
Sorry to ask, do you know if there's a tech? One of the Venoms doesn't have a ball running on it on Paul 1. So, which one? This one right here, the Pro? Yeah, yeah, right now, like, it's, we reset it and there's no ball. So, yeah. So, all right. All right, we might be able to see a tech come out and try to fix a game. So, Justin. B, can right, you get Justin? Yeah, go ahead. What's up? Justin, can you start asking people if they want to come to a party in my room later? <laughs> yeah, sounds good. <laughs> you guys want to come to a party at my room later? 306. <laughs> guys in? 306. All right. I'm sorry. All right. All right. 306. Pinballs will be there. All right. Let's try uh, it. 6 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> All right. I asked. I asked a random stranger to come to the room 306. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here it is. We're going to see some potential maintenance happening here. So Ooh, not sure where the pinball machine went. That's crazy. Brian, Brian Eddie's doing the maintenance himself. <laughs> They're all hands on deck at Stern. Yeah, everybody's here. So, yeah. So this is neat to be able to see it. How's the code so far? You feel feel good about where it gets released? And yeah, definitely. yeah, yeah. When it releases, that's great. Great. That's great. Yeah. So there it is. Got to take care of that glass. Look at that stern pinball back shirt. It looks beautiful. Oh yeah. There's the play field. He's looking for a pinball. So we're doing some live maintenance right now. Just got stuck when it's out there. I think he's counting the number of balls that are popping up. So how many total balls are there with this? Should be. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. Okay. It's, <laughs> that's maintenance problem. That's maintenance number 101. 101. Reboot it. That's very cool. So it was oh, counting man. the balls, but yeah, the really cool thing is like, yeah, this is where the balls kind of get trapped in. Yeah, you can lock up, up to six balls. Is that is that the? You can lock up to six balls and have yeah. a six ball multi ball if you want to risk it. Yeah, very good. Do you have a question? Yeah, <laughs> so many B. Uh, B the. Uh, Video game aspects of the pinball, is this something that the, you expect that Stern are going to focus on more going forward? I, I really find that interesting with the leveling up RPG styles and being able to take it with Stern Insider. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me see if I can pose that question once he gets everything up and running again. Yeah. Oh. All right, just doing some testing, some diagnostic testing. Very cool. All right. All right, give it another go. So they're saying uh, everybody here is all hands on deck. You got the designer doing tech work too. <laughs> got another machine inside out. Yeah, absolutely. That's so cool that your hands on right here. That's really cool. <laughs> So yeah, yeah Mike, if you want to get into Stern, not only do you have to make your own pinball, you have to actually do maintenance. So I'm sorry. Mike's oh, known wow. for not being that great of a maintainer of his stuff. So <laughs> yeah. B, how dare you sell me down the river like this? <laughs> I'm just trying. Is it there? Is it working? Yep. All right. It's back up and running. He got it up and running. Very cool. Thank you so much. He did it. He had a question about like the comic elements and the leveling up system that you had. Is that something that like is just an evolution of the Insider Connect system that you wanted to more people to get to sign into it and use it? Um, yeah, it ties in with that, but I think from a player standpoint, yeah, it gives people who aren't as good as on the screen. Yeah. 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 I'm never getting to a wizard mode either. <laughs> yeah. I see. Yeah. 
the game. Gets it. Unlock the card. I see. Very cool. Nice. And so it's a secret for like how the play field changes for those. Like that's going to be right. All right. Very cool. You got to lock up to see them. We got to save something, right? For the people. I gave her some mystery. Very cool. All right. Very cool. Thanks again for fixing it. Enjoy. Thank you. All right. So you got to see some pinball tech too on the channel. Mike, isn't this everything you could have asked for and more? The dream come true. I got to, I got to talk to the guy who made attack from Mars. I'm just on cloud nine right now. <laughs> yeah. All right. What else you got? Do you want to see anything else? Do anything else? Take off your pants. So, oh, uh, Justin, he says to take off your pants. Is that possible? No. Kids. Sorry. No, there's kids here, Michael. I mean, come on. Have some dignity. Decency. Uh, I mean, you're I, making I'm us so jump through hoops here. Guys. I'm so jealous. So, did you you guys hit up the arcade one-up booth earlier? Was that fun? Uh, we did. Uh, just uh, quick thoughts on arcade one-up. Uh, yeah. So... They came out with a machine that's promotional. There's only 225 uh, of these. The it's kits used. are limited. They have a sticker on the top, uh, two, uh, 225. 225. Uh, so I think it's just a promotional thing. Uh, and they still this year are, they got the same Star Wars pinballs. They're selling them for six ninety nine here in, uh, in San Diego. Uh, and you get a free T-shirt. Uh, but evidently, if you've ever um, chilled for them, they'll also just give you a T-shirt. Uh, so that was kind of cool. And... Um, yeah, so basically, uh, those them being here, they're you know they're trying to reach a new audience. That's them, and also, B and I were talking about this over lunch. What we think that they're doing here is uh, building relationships with their licensors. Licensors, yeah, yeah. So it's like they're working with Disney and Star Wars, and they're like, yeah, we'll support you. They probably had some conversation that was like, hey, you can sell your pinball machines at our place. We're like, yeah, we'll we'll be there for you because. Uh, we can't imagine that they're just like selling these pinball machines flying off the shelf, uh, the virtual ones, the Star Wars ones. But um, uh, yeah, maybe they're, this is uh, more about helping those licensors. Yeah. Uh, can and I, uh, I was one question though. Personal ahead, question, question about that booth. Do you think that John actually only set the arcade one up booth up there to sell his shirts that he screen printed in his homes? <laughs> uh, he made John, kids yeah. t-shirts and is selling them yeah really good theory yeah and in fact when the the section he's done so well um they they made us walk out of line or like uh, i tried to go into the kids section to buy a t-shirt or look at it and they're like nah bro you got to go wait in the 20 person line over there so i mean there's some demand for it people want to look at the kids x-men t-shirts and kicks man Stringer, Stringer Films has a two dollars super chat. What's required to receive a free Blitz? I don't know Stringer Films. I don't think Blitz is there, brother. Thank you for the super chat. Anyways, guys, uh, thank you so much for doing this tonight, coming on and getting a look at Venom. And I appreciate you doing this, struggling through like uh, the Wi-Fi issues and stuff like that. I I've got to say, for a table that I wasn't super excited about, I was more like, all right, get through Venom because I hear rumors about Jaws. I hear rumors. I keep calling it a table too, a uh, pinball machine. Uh, <laughs> get through Venom because I want to see Jaws. I want to see Back to the Future. I want to see these rumored games. I'm surprised by just how good Venom actually looks, how fast it looks, how interesting and different it is compared to so many other pinball machines I've seen in the last little while. Um, B, is this B and Justin? I'll ask you after your initial play experience. Do you think that you'll be picking up one of these machines? Uh, you go first. It's not impossible. Uh, <laughs> Sir uh, Venom is good enough. Brian Eddy, like, it's his new stuff that he's coming out with. You have a bond with Brian Eddy now. Yeah. You have uh, a connection. It's probably, it's likely going to hold its value. It's, uh, it's going to be a great game that a lot of people will enjoy. And uh, keep in mind, me, or I'm sorry, Michael B., Thank you for allowing us to be on the show. And you know we only do it because let me look straight into the camera lens because we love you. We, I love you too, buddy. <laughs> Super lovely. What about you, B? You just dropped like no, I'm not gonna $40,000. Get it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm pretty maxed out on pins. Uh, just like my whole arcade collection, I have to really think about what I have in my collection. I have a Star Wars Pro, a Foo Fighters Premium, and a Godzilla Premium. And I have a virtual pinball machine that I still enjoy because I can play a lot of other games on it. 
Um, and Justin saw my plays. I technically may fit another one. Um, but I think you can fit two I more. I can fit two more. Two more. <laughs> yeah, but for Venom, I think it's going to be one of those that I think the Brian Eddy games was, I heard like Stranger Things, for example, was slow for people to like, but it, yeah. it became something that people grew to like eventually. And I think Venom's going to be that same way. I think for the pinball enthusiast that looks at it for the very first time, I think it's going to be a little busy to like look at from a design perspective. It might feel like it feels a little bit simple, like... Harry was explaining what a fan design was, so I learned that terminology, and now I like I can't I see it. Um, but I think it's gonna have to take some time to grow on you. Uh, and I had a first couple of runs that made me like it. Like I was playing with Dustin, yeah. I was like, oh, I'm better than these guys at yeah, it. You're very good. I, I was like, this could be my game. I was playing for like three, four, five minutes, and the sign of a good game is one that new people can pick up and play easily, but it's yeah. deep enough for people to be able to continue playing with it. And the level up system gives you some replay value. I probably find myself looking for it on location. Uh, the team in Venom as a character just isn't strong enough for me personally to pick it up in my collection. Yeah, but you can unlock the big character. Yeah, but like, any of those characters oh, still don't really stick out to me. Yeah, Wolverine. I mean, if it was if it was a pure X Men cabinet, like that was really nostalgic to me. Venom is just like, and maybe this is me being a Spider Man guy in general. Venom is, is Spider Man's arch nemesis, even though he's in the game. So I kind of like inherently always hate playing against Venom players and Marvel vs. Capcom. So there's this like intrinsic uh, like dislike for Venom. He's not my guy. If he was like my main character, maybe. If it was a Spidey, if it was a Mega Man, you know. But I'm just saying. There's some people I would know. Like uh, Webhead, if you remember him from the days of uh, Streaming with Rev, he would love a Venom pinball machine because Venom is his absolute favorite character. But so it's not B, mine. B, B, just to tell so, you some Spider-Man stuff. It. All right, hold on. What's the question? What's the question? Oh, Mike B asked B Kong who would recommend to purchase a V pin from. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think I think the most commercial V pin, honestly, is the At Games Legends pinball machine. So if you're just looking for commercial pinball to help you get into it, uh, that's probably your best bet. The 4K one. I don't know. I can't say anything about it because I don't have it. Uh, fully built ones. You're talking about extreme. There's a couple. Do a yeah, Google, Google search, search for them, but they're pretty expensive. They're like they range five thousand dollars. They go right? all the way up to like seven or eight. Yeah. So, but seven or eight will give you probably yeah. the highest quality. And if you just want to play casually, arcade went up pinball with the mystery encoder mod is a very simple way to play a bunch of tables that is very easy to do. So I still recommend that for casual deep end folks. Yeah. So all right, is that it? Yeah. Are we done? What, no, I had to tell you that your theory on Venom being a bad guy is so wrong. Venom was his arch nemesis until Carnage, and then they had to team up for the greater good. Carnage He's an is the bad guy. He's still an asshat in Marvel vs. Capcom. I still hate playing against Venom characters, so sorry. I can't do it. I have this intrinsic dislike. But he's cool. He's a cool character. He looks awesome. He looks uh, like Spawn. P-Dubs, P-Dubs is trying to intervene and ask Carrie Hardy a question, so what P Dubs is actually thinking about getting Venom, thinking about getting Venom hard. I know both you guys are telling them get the premium if you're going to get one. You're going to want the toys. The experience is a little yep. bit better. Yeah. I, so if, for P Dubs, what do you recommend? You think he still gets the premium? Get the premium. Yeah. yeah. Don't get the pro. Don't get the pro. Don't get the pro. Like artwork, you can change artwork if you're really desperate about it. But I mean, they're not going to pay attention to it eventually. You gotta go premium for for this table. I think you gotta go premium. Yeah. 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 So spend the money, Dub. Spend the money. Do it. Get some more super it. chats. You can do it. So uh, just a just a quick question. The classic song three dressed up as a nine. Would that be the best way to explain Venom Pro? <laughs> three dressed up as a nine. Yeah. Uh, the classic song three dressed up as a nine. Does that describe a Venom Pro? You know. <laughs> I, I can, I, I don't, yeah, I'm lost on it. <laughs> you, you've never heard the sound. It. Okay, just it's very possible Pro will do well. Yeah. yeah, I think the reason why is that replay ability where yeah. they'll track you on the inside connect yeah. so people can keep on coming back and unlock more characters and kind of level up over time. Yeah. That's really cool. It's like a game save. It's not just a high score keeping that track of it yeah. and your achievements. This is actually something where you're coming back to the arcade and unlocking more of the game. You're continuing your progress in the game. Yeah. And that's really cool. So the pro may win in that way. But if you're going to buy it for your home, I would recommend if 
beat up just by the premium. Yeah. Be again, because it's premium for the home, pros for the operators. And if you can't afford the extra amount, then wait and save up till you can. That that's that's just my recommendation because it's going to hold its value anyway, right? So eventually you're going to get rid of it. Eventually, eventually you'll get rid of it. It's not like you're going to own it for the next seventy years, right, or fifty years, however long you have in this life. Are you saying everybody dies? Is that what you're saying? Nobody does. So anyway, you're going to sell it at sell it at that premium price, or you're going to sell it at that pro price, and you're going to get short of your money back. So just so don't Justin be like Michael B and get free mortgage to buy an arcade. <laughs> like if it takes you five years to save up, then save up for five years. Yeah. No, just just get money however you can. If you got to sell your body on the streets, buy a pinball. Yeah. 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 All right, so I think we're coming up on the hour, Mike. So uh, any last thoughts, things? You... No, I, I just love you guys. Thank you so much for doing this. This, uh, You know, I get to live vicariously through your adventures while I'm stuck here on a very small island off the coast of Canada. Oh, Agent Flash is about to break $100 million on, and we just jinxed him. Oh, no, he still has a ball save. All right, here we go. He's level 37. He's at $94 million. I think you can get onto the leaderboard. All right, let's see. Let's no pressure. This is uh, Agent Flash. He is he is part of the community, and you just drained all the pressure. I'm sorry. It's still a great. Score. It's still a pretty good score. Ninety five million. Am I? Am I? Oh, oh free game replayed. Yeah, look at that. Ninety nine oh, mil. So oh, good. Dope. All right, we're gonna jump in and play so that way we can beat him and and really get there. So, all right. All right. Thanks, See you guys. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful night. Enjoy the rest of Comic Con. All Buy right. some of Gandhi's screen printed shirts. All right. See you later. Bye. All right. See you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Venom looks really, really cool. Surprisingly cool. This is a game that I wasn't super excited for. Like, I, I love Spider Man. You know, I, I love Venom. You've probably seen me wear my classic, oh my God, my classic uh, Venom. Um, it's actually. One of my favorite comic art of all time. It's the one where Venom thinks he killed Spider-Man and he's standing. Uh, it's just Venom on the cover holding like a skull of Spider-Man. Tricked him, kept him on an island. Uh, but anyways, Venom's cool. But I wasn't super excited about this table. And even when I first saw it, I was like, I don't know. The, the thing that really made me excited was the bell tower for nostalgia realisms. But after seeing some gameplay, after people hearing people talk about it, I'm pretty excited about this table, surprisingly so. I do have a poll up, and I just wanted to check that before we go. So I asked at the beginning, what do you think of the Venom Stern pinball table so far? We've got 87 votes, and the winner was 54%. Awesome, can't wait to play it. 26% says, looks okay, I'll check it out. And 20% said, not interested. Wow, surprise, not interested. I, I have to say, I was probably in that category until until I saw how good the game played. Am I still alive? Am I gone? Am I gone? <laughs> Chat went off the screen. So I'm just going to say goodnight in case you can't see me. Thank you, everybody, for being here. This has been Chillin' Chat with Michael B, and I'm a full-on pinball channel now. <laughs> everybody oh my god i've got someone we're not going anywhere we're still going brother what's happening p-dubs i hate you mike why i i i i, I hate you because you are the king of fomo in oh, our big community. time big time you're the king you're the king of fomo did you order a venom pinball yes yeah <laughs> did you go premium <laughs> I went premium. That's my boy. I'm so happy for you, man. The, yeah. The, the P in P dubs is actually pinball. Yeah. So that'll be my first turn. Although I really like collecting the, you know, you know me, the nineties pins and, uh, you know, early two thousands. Those are the ones that are really piqued my interest. But, uh, but, uh, this one should be fun. It should be fun. I'm impressed with what I've seen personally. So, yeah, I I I, I love. I, I gotta be honest. I love Zombie Yeti's art, but I thought the table was a little busy at first. But it all makes sense now with all the different game modes. Why well, it is well, the let, way it let is. me let me throw something at you. You like Tales from the Crypt? Love Tales from the Crypt. Table's just as busy. 
<laughs> Why are you shitting on Tales from the Crypt now? No, hey, I'm not shitting on it. I'm saying the, ta the table artwork on Tales from the Crypt is just as busy as Venom. There's crap everywhere. Like, if you stare at it for a very long time, you're like, you know, there's so much. Yeah. So, you know, same thing. So, so. when you get tired of Venom after you've had it for a while, I'll trade you for D&D. &D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me trade you a $10,000 pin for a for a three thousand dollar pin. Thanks so much, Mike. I, I'm I'm good like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um yeah, so they're the it says they ship in September, so a couple months from now. So that yeah, that's not long at all, is it? No, no, it'll go by quick, man. Time flies. It really does. I, I I thought my daughter was I it feels like my daughter was only born yesterday. She's gonna be seven yeah. in November. Like it just went by. Where did time go? Scarlet's gonna be seven. Seven, yeah. Holy cow! You, you and I started talking. She was barely. I know, she was a little bar kid, barely little baby. Yeah, barely speaking. Holy cow! So, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, here's the thing. Like we, we. It still feels like we're relatively new friends, fast friends. But we've been friends for like four years now. Relatively close. Yeah, yeah. If you think about it. Uh, yeah. since we, yeah, yeah, that is nice too. Like whenever this journey or hobby dies or, you know, you personally walk away from it, you know, you're still going to have those friends, you know, yeah. and that's really cool. So the, the trick is you make your channel about you, not about a product. So like yeah. my channel is constantly evolving. I just talk yeah. about what I'm interested in at the time. Yeah. Eventually, this is just going to be a burger channel. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because sometimes I'll see it, people will be like, man, P Dub sure does like to talk about himself a lot. And I'm like, it's, it's my, my channel. <laughs> I'm supposed to talk about myself and the things that I'm interested in and the things that I'm not interested in. Yeah. <laughs> so, so while I have you here, people are here to talk about uh, Venom. So we should talk yes. about that a little bit. You yeah. are a purchaser now. You're the first person in our community that I know put down the money planked it down and said, I'm going to get Venom. What made you make that purchase? Uh, just uh, I, the leveling up features. Um, yeah. Um, it sucks that the pro doesn't have it. Yeah. Man, the, the pro artwork, it just looks so good. Just looks so good. And I know like a lot of other people who collect a lot of things, if you have a lot of things, you got them all smushed together. So odds are I'm not going to see it because I'm going to have it next to three other pins in the home. So I'm probably not even going to see it, the artwork. So eventually I'll get over it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, really enjoyed watching the gameplay. Uh, caught up on the stream that, um, who is it? Dead Flip? Yeah, Dead Flip Jack Danger. Mm -hmm. I was listening to that while I was working my day job. So I had it up on one monitor and working on the other. And, you know, I really enjoyed what I saw. So they sold me on it. So, yeah. Was it B? You can tell me it was B. That's fine. No, it wasn't B. If anything, he made me regret my purchase. <laughs> it was Dead Flip. <laughs> B's a hater. He only likes Spider-Man. Venom is way cooler. Venom is way cooler. Everybody yeah, knows is, that. Man. The symbiote? Come on, man. Symbiote Spider-Man was the greatest story arc they ever did. Yeah. So we'll see. But uh, yeah, we'll see. It'll be here in a couple months. So. I'm excited, man. This is going to be your first turn. I know you've toyed with the idea before. You had a Deadpool. Uh, you were thinking about it, and you also almost got an Elvira House of Horrors. I, I think. Yeah. I think this is the time you're getting a new exciting table. I still did want you to get that Elvira House of Horrors. I pushed your so did I. to get that. So did I. The guy had it, and he's like, "You pay me right now. We'll drop it off tomorrow." That's how quickly yeah. I would have got it from uh, who was it? A uh, game room goodies game room guys yeah who are here in arizona and they're like we have one it's ready to go you know the person the person i guess who had ordered it and they had it canceled their order so they had an extra one in stock and see my problem mike it, 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 you know i love pinball but yeah. i just i, I don't I, I don't feel pinball machines should be the cost of automobiles you know what I mean? And <laughs> one, once you get over 10 grand to me, that's as much money as you spend on a decent car, like a used DC used car. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you know, you could buy a beater for a couple, you know, a couple grand, but you know, it just, I, I think the pinball prices are <coughs> just way too high. And 
I hope that they come back down. I hope yep. that they come back down. And and it sucks that I, I place this order, which will only delay that from happening. <laughs> <laughs> like we got another one. <laughs> Sucker born every minute. I, I agree with that. One. Very quickly, we got a five dollar super chat here from Jeff Walsh, and this is for you guys too. Mike B, P Dubs, B Kong, console kits. I appreciate you guys curing my bore, boredom. Oh. Thank you for tolerating me. Thank you so much, Jeff. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I'm actually thinking about putting all my pinball machines in my, you know, you know, I call it the Marvel room because it's yeah. my, our living room is full of Marvel decorations. So it actually, it's going to fit in nicely down there. I'm thinking about moving all the pinballs in there, all the real pinballs. And uh, that way I get them out of the other room that, that they're in now. So. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll at least have one that matches the theme. <laughs> so I, I'm in a bit of a tough spot. You know, uh, they call me on the streets and in the sheets, Mikey Two Pins. So oh, yeah. I, I've only got room for two pinball machines. And Brian Eddy was saying tonight, there's a very good chance this year we could see a vault edition of Stranger Things. So I just got D&D. Huh. I, I might have to move D&D out to get Stranger Things if it does come out. I'm not going to lie. Stranger Things, I love that machine. I just love it. I've played it. I, I It wasn't my favorite machine, yeah. Stranger Things. I understand why a lot of people liked it, but... It, it, um, it's got a lot of elements very similar to Attack from Mars. Now, this, this year is going to be hard with the new stuff coming out anyways because mm -hmm. Venom looks great. There's rumors that Chicago Gaming may do another run on Medieval Madness. I mean, it's hard not to be excited about being able to get your hands on a Medieval Madness. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah, how much are they going to how much are they going to sell that for? Because like how Jeez, much is how much is Cactus Canyon? Isn't it like 12 or some crap? Yeah, it's a like, lot of money. Like pinball's ridiculous. Like we're in a different stratosphere here. Like, uh, I yeah. mean, you know, arcade one it, up and we're it'd like, be great if, geez, it'd be great if somebody, <laughs> it'd be great if somebody made three quarter scale pinball. <laughs> <laughs> Good three-quarter scale pinball. <laughs> Can you imagine if they did? If they if they got yeah. into you know. So I'll, I'll give you a I'll give you a blast from the past. Now, do you remember a very early episode of Super Game Room Dudes? We had Ice on the home arcade people. Then they were trying to get into the home market, selling like the uh, what was it like the home versions of the pins and like the uh, yeah. What, uh, that, what was the ice was, hockey? The bubble hockey called that? That uh, checks. Checks. checks hockey super yeah, checks that, yeah that was the last time i ever let someone come on my stream where i didn't know everything that they could possibly say because the yeah. one thing that they didn't want to reveal was the price and it made me think that okay so if we do this stream if the price is low enough it would be great for people in our community who are looking for more cost effective solutions like they were going to have a smaller ski ball machine and, and things like that, you know, like a more home version. Yeah. But instead of it being that they're like, yeah, the, the home version of the ski ball machine is only going to be two inches shorter in length. <laughs> and also only like a few hundred dollars cheaper than the same commercial version that you would pick up or that someone would have in, in an arcade. Yeah. And at that point they were just wasting our time. You know what I mean? That was probably one of our more embarrassing moments that, um, you know, it is what it is. And you just learn and move on. You know what I mean? Make sure you don't let a company come on without knowing what they're going to say. You know, <laughs> well, make sure it's worth your time, your viewers time. Well, you know? I, I still think it was worth our viewers time. I think it was interesting, but it's funny how at the time we were like, man, those prices are wacky. And here we are talking about buying yeah. Stern pinballs for like 12 and 13 thousand dollars. What the hell? Yeah, but you know, I mean, pinball's so cool, though. It really is. It really is, you know. and it's it's uh, it's funny that people bring up the fact that oh, you guys all like pinball now. Yeah, because it's really fun, <laughs> and yeah. we're looking for new fun things. Yeah, I like pinball. I like pinball. Like I told everyone, I I want to have six, like six real pinball machines, and that's it. So, like, it's not so like I'm gonna buy twenty. No, yeah. of course not. But you'll have a room with six. And do you see yourself taking some in, moving some out when you get? Yeah, like like once I, once Super I Mario have... is going to stay there forever, right? Yeah, Mario will stay there forever because that's from my childhood. But everything else, like if I ever get seriously bored of it, sell it or trade it, you know, and bring a new one in. 
you know, but always have like around six. I got the perfect spot for it in, in the other room. Yeah. So dandy, dandy. I'm I'm so excited. I can't wait to see you get your venom. Your this would be your first brand new pinball too, right? Uh first brand new stern. Yeah, brand new stern. Yeah, brand new new like new new. New inbox. Yeah, cuz every real pinball machine I have here is all used. So Are we going to get another iconic photo of you looking out the window waiting for us? Oh, that would be kind of funny. <laughs> that would be kind of funny. Nah, I probably won't do that. Conti's got some real pins. I just noticed that he's a lot. Here. Yeah, Conti, how many how many real pins do you have, buddy? I forget how many you have. I think he's, he has and, four. And, and let us know which ones you have in the live chat. He hit. He's got a couple. Good... Sorry, I'm choking here. Jason M says Patrick six pins. Ha! <laughs> yeah, I wish. We'll yeah, Conti, Conti, uh, Conti. Uh, I'm gonna dox Conti now. Conti just sold his Ghostbusters today. Ghostbusters yeah. left this house, so he's got a new pin coming in. He's got James Bond. Is it pro or premium you got coming in, Conti? Oh, okay, he's getting the Bond one. Yeah. I played that at, um, where was it? Um, Castles and Coasters here in Arizona. I played it there. I wasn't super impressed with it. I mean, it was okay. I love the music. I love the artwork on the table. But the game itself it was kind of boring. Yeah. You know, like the machine looked great, sounded great, great artwork on it, but you know, it didn't it didn't really excite me. <laughs> yeah, we know, Carrie. We know. Believe me, we know. I I went from yeah. one to two very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, Carrie. We're we'll stay in our lane. We'll stay in our lane. We'll try. <laughs> we'll try to stay in our lane. Guys, we're just we're just having. You remember? Fun in here. Do you remember? Do you remember when Kerry got his arcade one up NFL Blitz and did a video <laughs> on it, and we were telling him to stay in his lane? <laughs> and now Kerry's in your live chat telling us, "Yeah, you guys so, are." So, guys, for real, for real pinball <laughs> channels and for really good pinball content from people who know who they're what they're talking about, go check out Kerry Hardy. That's who I yeah. go to when I want to see stuff on pinball. I like Kerry's content. Kerry does really good content. He's got a really nice, interesting opinion about all these pinball. He makes you think about them. Um, you know, Kerry says that he might be letting go his Cactus Canyon in order to pick up Venom. Eh, find out how much it'll cost to ship to Canada. What Cactus Canyon? No, no, no. I don't want Cactus Canyon. That's I not thought for you me. did. No, no, you want no. Medieval Madness. Yeah, I, I'd get a Medieval Madness tomorrow. Like if if that's real, Chicago Gaming's really going to release it again. Like I, I would, I would have a hard time uh, choosing between Stranger Things and Medieval Madness, but Medieval Madness would probably win. And if they did Attack from Mars again, game over. I, I'd buy an Attack from Mars immediately if I could get one. Really? Even though yeah. it's uh, the newer, not like an original. Yeah, I, I don't give a shit as long as I can play Attack from Mars. Like everything, it, we played the remake at uh, Galloping Ghosts when we were in Chicago. Yeah, you and do need to awesome. You do need to practice before Attack from Mars comes out because I think I'm still way ahead of you on the FX3 leaderboards. Just yeah, that's because FX3 is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've uh, on the on the actual arcade one up machine. I flipped the game a couple times. So yeah, no way. Yeah, good for you. Yeah, on the arcade one up. On the arcade one up before I sold it. Yeah. Yeah. So anything else at Comic-Con uh, excite you? Do you see any other coverage today from anybody else? John D is uh, selling screen printed shirts. He made himself at his booth. <laughs> Man, what a fall from grace. Do you remember back during like C2E2 2019, they had a massive booth and they would hire all these hot models to wear arcade one up t-shirts and just walk around and invite all the geeks to come talk to them come into our booth yeah and now you got john d sitting by himself he's got no arcade machines to show he's just selling t-shirts <laughs> well they're, they're, what a fall for grace <laughs> no <laughs> maybe but arcade one up they're not there to this is not like an electronic show I if know. they're there for kith and uh you know the kith collab and they're there to uh shill star wars pinball because they still got a lot of those Star Wars pinballs to sell. So, you know, they're really um, 
there with Disney, Marvel, that team up. That's really the reason they're there. I think the next big arcade one-up showing will be uh, Evo again and then CES. That seems to be the ones they focus on. If Arcade 1-Up doesn't start selling some cabinets soon, we're going to see John D. vaping at a flea market just trying to, <laughs> just trying to pitch counter collect, collector cades at people. I got 10,000 collector cades. We thought they were going to be a hit. He's going to be selling them for $19.99 at, a, at the flea market in uh, you know, Austin, Texas. <laughs> Uh, Gary, <laughs> he says you should screenshot me. Uh, the, I can't get I can't get a pinball machine up these stairs to my office, man. Yeah. Maybe I'll do it from downstairs where my pins are. We'll see. Yeah, my office. This office is big enough where I could actually put all the real pinball machines in here. But the problem, like you said, bringing them up the stairs. Oh man, I really want to. I had a hell of enough time bringing that two hundred pound candy cap upstairs to the loft, but I really wanted it in. The yeah, and uh, I I don't want to be dragging more shit up the stairs. You know what I mean? I just don't want to do it. You know what? You know what's really cool? Uh, something I can't believe I got to do tonight. I got to talk mm. to Brian Eddy. Like that that's life changing event for me. Like creator of Tack from Mars, and B B was like, let's just talk to him. And I was like, what? <laughs> no, don't do that. I was like, I'm weird when I meet oh, like you know I people and that. stuff like that. Oh yeah, you got to like, talk to him. Did yeah, you yeah. ask him? Did you ask him for a job? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Might be if I work with them, maybe I'll get them for free. I, I'm telling you, man, like he told me I, I got to get on the floor. I'm going to start uh, somewhere. I'm going to get in with some V pin company. I'll make a table and that's my ticket to success. I'll get in somehow. Yeah. Sounds like you're trying to say kiss with a lisp. I know. And that's what I talked about. The Kith collab Kith. is actually a uh, kiss collab done by Mike Tyson. <laughs> the, the way I look at it is when they do these collabs, obviously I'm not a customer to buy any of those collab cabs. Yeah. But if those collabs are successful enough to bring in more revenue and awareness to the company where we could get the titles we want down the road, like if they pay for good stuff later on, then you know let them let them do this stuff you know what i mean like so yeah I, you know, I'll, I'll, but... I'll say this and this is probably a pretty unpopular opinion i know a lot of people are really upset with what arcade one up are doing right now because they're re-releasing cabs or not, doing. Or or not, not doing, doing all that stuff doing. but at the same time like this doesn't bother me is there anything that they've released so far this year that i'm interested in buying no is it selling well yeah retailers are picking it up like they're actually having a lot of retail success in terms of the big stores buying from them, people are pretty happy with them, the ones that are getting them. So if this makes Arcade 1-Up money, you know, seed money, because they're not putting as much money in because they already have the IPs, all the uh, software development, whatever they do mm -hmm. for the game mm -hmm. is done. I mean, they're just banking money right now. So if that, you know, bankrolls them, gives them enough capital to do some cool shit down the line, something I do want to see good for them uh, like you know I, i'm disappointed there's nothing i want but a lot of people in the community are happy and it seems to be on an upward swing financially for them so good for them man yeah provided uh provided they actually release some new games i mean <laughs> <laughs> we, sometimes we got to take the selfish stuff out of it when we're reporting i agree with you like they're not doing anything i'm interested in right now there's nothing i see where i'm like i have to have that I mean, if you think about it, back in like 2019, 2020, if you ask somebody like, how excited are you about Arcade 1-Up on a scale of 10? They probably would say they're somewhere in the 7 to 10 range because they had so many products coming out, so many SKUs. Like, if you didn't want to spend the big money, you could buy counter cades, collector cades, you know what I mean? Like, party cades. Like, they had different form factors, cocktail tables. We haven't even gotten that this year, you know what I mean? Like... They just finally announced like an NBA Jam party gate, right? Like if you ask someone today, like, let's do that. Let's ask your live chat on a scale of one to 10. How excited are you guys about Arcade One Up right now? Just put a number in the chat. Be honest. If you're if you're still super excited, throw that nine, throw that 10 in there. Me, I think I'm like down to a three, Mike, because they're just not doing anything and nothing's coming out so i think i'm at a three like if they say we're releasing time crisis and 
we got some XL cabinets coming and we got like Robotron coming or whatever. Like that kind of stuff would bump my score up. You know what I mean? But right now I'm at like a three. You know what I mean? Like I'll I'll keep my eye out, see what they're up to, but I'm not like digging for my wallet. Does that make sense? Well, I, I'm in the same boat, man. I'm buying other things because one, Arcade One Up's not doing a lot of stuff that I'm interested in. Two, there's nothing available here, like nothing. <laughs> they just they're not here. They haven't come to Canada. So uh I'm I'm probably the lowest I've been in a very long time. Yeah. Probably probably like three. Yeah, yeah. That's where I'm at right now. Yeah. And eventually it'll be a zero. <laughs> they don't they don't they don't pick it up. <clears throat> Well, you know, we're, we're finding other stuff to buy, other stuff to talk about and be excited about. Yeah. Here we are tonight. You know, two guys are at Comic-Con. Me and you are here now talking about you just bought a stern table. So, yeah. The, and this is what happens. If you don't continue to bring out products people are interested in, they're going to spend, spend their money elsewhere. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. None, none of us are married to Arcade one Up. We didn't sign a commitment to, you know, love and cherish till death do us part. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, you did. I did it, but you did. <laughs> p keeps it real. <laughs> you did. You did. I did it. Um, when are you going to make a video for Dungeons and Dragons? I know I want to see it, and so yeah. do a lot of other people. So uh, I will probably... I, I got to get my Tron video out first and talk about my Tron pickup and what happened to Tron. And then after that one's done, my very next video I'm going to do is on D and D. And I also want to do some gameplay on D and D. So, you know, I got that set up where I put the camera over. It's not really a real pinball setup, but it looks okay. So I'll uh, do some gameplay too. I'm, I'm getting pretty good at it. Not, not amazing, but like, uh, you know, I'm yeah. well over, well over a million points every time I play now. Yeah. Yeah, I was feeling pretty good because I got a couple of videos out myself and then uh, I got overwhelmed again. Oh, it's so much, man. I've talked about that with you as well as with folks on my channel that I have so much content I need to make. I don't even know where to start. And you just say, screw it. I'm going to go watch TV. Like now I can go stream the new Flash movie. And I was watching that eating dinner, even though I saw Ooh. it in theaters. It's That's Amazon. out? I can watch it's that? On Amazon. Well, it's on Amazon Prime. And so To buy you know, or? Both. Buy or rent. Buy or rent. So I can mm. probably watch it illegally through Plex. <laughs> probably. <laughs> I'll just talk to Rostov. I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say how I was watching it. I'm just <laughs> trying to keep us in the clear here, Mike. But either way, you know, like I'm, you know, downstairs eating dinner, watching Flash. I'm like, man, I, I have so much videos to make, but I just, you just get overwhelmed, and you're like, I don't know where to start. Oh, tell me, man. And like life is so hard, especially with like two little kids, like trying to find time. Yeah. So um, I finished recording all my footage for my Tron video about a week and a half ago. I just haven't had time to do the video. And somehow I've been making other videos instead. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, uh, Scott, I appreciate that comment. My video wasn't actually great. The retro shooter. I, I did a live stream. So there's a big difference between putting together a nice produced review video heavily edited making it look pretty script written all that stuff versus just going live and saying let's let's check this thing out honestly when i went back and watched the live stream i thought it sucked um i was like man uh because i was talking so fast because there was so much information to go through but um uh if it led them to fix some things that'd be great uh they 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 left me a message saying they wanted to talk to me and they said, email us. And I emailed them. I haven't heard from them. So I don't know what they want to talk to me about. Maybe I'm in trouble, Mike. Maybe they just wanted to get your email address so they could send you eatabagadix.com. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, his video was fine. It was a produced video. I mean, it was a big difference. So I'll probably still end up doing a, a short produced video for that product eventually. Yeah. You going to tell people what happened to Tron? Uh, in my video that I was going to make about a week and a half ago. Oh, yeah. So I'll tell you guys what happened to Tron. Uh, yeah, I, I Check this out. This is great. Would you actually this. want me to tell people now? No, man. I mean, if you want to make if you want to save it for the video. I do want to save it for the video. B, okay. B was making fun of me. <laughs> he said, wait, you're going to make a pickup video even though <laughs> I was like, shut up, B. 
<laughs> Don't be so judgmental. <laughs> yeah. Poor Tron. Yeah. Poor, Look at poor how Tron. how times change. You got Mike B's not shilling arcade one up, and John D is resorted to selling t-shirts at a convention. <laughs> Well, I, I don't I don't think they're actually John D's t-shirts, but I, just, I was watching his Instagram live yesterday, and right next to the arcade one up booth, they got all these like um, Star Wars t-shirts, and there's like a little hand drawn sign that is like buy two for twenty bucks, buy three for, for like twenty five. And I'm like, did John D screen print these? He's running like a side hustle. Buy three t-shirts, get a Star Wars pinball machine for free. <laughs> You know, honestly, there's another mod I wanted to do to an arcade one-up pinball machine, and I'm almost tempted to pick up another machine just for modding. But I'm trying to just let that go. I love what arcade one-up tried to do with their virtual pinball machines. I love the form factor. I love the way the machine feels. It's got a good weight, um, you know, good height. It's comfortable to play. It just, you know, it falls short on everything it should be. Like, the DMD screwed up. And hearing from Dave and Macintosh talk, if they ever go back and do it again, it's going to be worse because they got to make it more cost-effective. And to do so, they got to take away from it. It already wasn't good enough. And now it's going to become worse. So it's just really disappointing. That's You want to know why I, uh, <laughs> I'm more interested in real pinball right now? That's why. <laughs> the virtual options outside of the ALP aren't so good. <laughs> Well, are you talking about expense-wise? No, not expense-wise. Well, yes, expense-wise. Everything with Arcade 1-Up right now is too expensive. But, um, you know, a real pinball is just a different animal. I, I will say this, uh, and I know Arcade people will get really mad at me from saying this. Uh -oh, there's, there's, there's less of a jump from playing a real Arcade machine to playing something on a Multicade or an Arcade 1-Up. Like, the experience isn't that different. But with virtual pinball compared to real pinball, that's that's like a million mile jump. It's so friggin' different. Interesting. Never looked at it like that before, Mike. But it's an interesting point because you're going from a digital version to the real thing. Yep. Not like we could really play Frogger unless we want to run across the street and hopefully not get hit. <laughs> <laughs> Man, look at how good that Dead Cells cabinet looks behind you there. Mike. I know. It's dope. Too bad that company went under. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, what did you get F1 for? I overpaid on Revenge with a clean working CRT. Not much. Dude, you paid way too much. You paid double. You paid double. I, pay, I paid market value. So market value on that is around 3500 bucks. Yeah. So, yeah. You, you paid almost double. <clears throat> well, we can you look got, that up. You got, you got ripped off, Jeff. Sorry, Jeff. Uh, there's a episode one here locally I can get for about uh, somewhere between four and five Canadian. I don't know yeah. how good a shape it's in, though. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, man. But, you know, I'm sorry. That sounds a little cold. But if you're happy with your purchase, it's all that matters. So, no. But, but still, I would have, uh, I would have tried to negotiate that down a bit. It's hard, man, because you meet some people that are willing to deal and they're just awesome. They want to, you know, move the hobby along and then you meet other and people. Some people and, don't like yeah. the D&D &D pin that you have. I wanted to get from that douchebag here in Arizona. And that guy. Oh, no. Was so angry. Like how much? So how much angry. did he want for it? It was like forty five hundred. He wanted like forty eight hundred for a pin that's only worth maybe again, thirty five hundred bucks, maybe. So. Well, it, it seems to have jumped up a little bit since then. Like uh, they're selling here in Canada for about seven thousand Canadian right now with the topper. Yeah. Well, I mean, with the movie coming out, the price went up a little bit. I think this was was this before the movie came out or after? I think this was before the around movie. the same time it was in theaters. Yeah. Yeah. So it makes sense that the price went up a little bit, but th this guy was man. So, according to Pinside, estimated value for Revenge, Revenge from Mars is usually anywhere between forty-one sixty to forty-eight forty. You're talking Canadian? No, that's U.S. Oh, okay. And how much? And you're going to get one? 
Did I miss something? The, the the guy that's got the tales from the crypt, he's got a couple pinball tables there. So he's got Demolition Man, he's got Tales from the Crypt, and he's got uh, Star Wars Episode One. So he said the Episode One would be somewhere between four thousand, five thousand, somewhere around that level. So I told you about it. Remember, I made the joke. I'm going to get the same pinball table as you and Justin. Episode One, we'll all have it. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I, yeah. I never ended up doing that just because I, I just got a really sweetheart deal on that D&D table. I couldn't couldn't say no. Yeah. So, like, right here, episode one says market range 3,600 <coughs> 3, to 4,100. So, I got it for, like, 3,500. So where, like, you know. where are you looking? Where are you getting your prices from? I'm just looking at episode on Pinside. I'm looking at Pinside right now for episode one. Are these Canadian prices then? 4,160 to 4,840? Uh, well, they made more Star Wars than they did Revenge from Mars, yeah. if I recall. So they made over 5,000 Star Wars. And then they went by. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the super chat, by the way, Jeff. I really Actually, appreciate it. Actually, I was wrong. They made more Revenge from Mars. They made 6,800 of them. Probably because I think people like the gameplay better, maybe, yeah. than Revenge from Mars. It's, it's rated better. If I, if the, the mini games on Revenge from Mars that you play on the CRT that's inverted are, are hella fun. They're great games. Yeah. Um, Star Wars, there's about, there's got to be at least a dozen mini games. And even now, after I've had it for a little bit, you get kind of tired of seeing the same mini games. You know, you start to get a little bored of it, you know? So, but hey, man, I like it. It's a cool machine. Jeff, another super chat. You didn't have to do that, brother. Yeah, I know I got yeah. fuzzied, but Denver is a dry market for arcades, plus inflation and the COVID. It happens, man. It's it's yeah. the exact same thing here. If something comes up. Oh, yeah. And with uh, Jar Jar on the uh, the artwork, some people hate that. <laughs> plus, there's a Jar Jar toy on the table. Some people hate that. Who doesn't like Jar Jar? Jar Jar is the best. Well, what I like about the table is on one, one side of the artwork, you got the villains. On the other side, you got the heroes, right? And... Uh, when I like when I did my video and I was showing the arc the pinball machine for some people out there, it's the first time they've ever seen it. Yeah, you know, and they were commenting like, "Wherever you put this in your house, make sure the Jar Jar is against the wall. That way, you never see it. You know, you have the Darth Maul side stick it out, which made sense. The the, the bad guy side is way cooler than the than the Jar Jar. Always side. is. Dark side's always oh, yeah. cool. I don't know what yeah. George Lucas was thinking when he came up with those movies. Like there's a 50 style diner in the middle of uh, what is it? Yeah. Uh, the second movie, which is yeah. Attack of the Clones. Yeah. Yeah. Where he took the dart to him. Yeah. Stupid 50 style diner. Uh, what are you doing here? Obi -Wan? This is from Ooh. one of them cloners. It depends on how deep your pocketbook is. Oh, stupid. <laughs> stupid. <laughs> oh, um, and also too, like, the, he just had the actors in front of green screens. Yeah. So visually, it kind of sucks. Yeah. Uh, those movies compared to you look at all the Star Wars movies and TV shows they've been making where it's actually just like the original Star Wars where that was actually sets, you know, and real props. CGI, maybe like if there's a window, like whatever's outside the window is CGI, but everything inside the house is a real thing that they can touch and pick up. So if he hadn't made the movies that way, I think they would have looked a lot better. You know, but he he wanted to do he wanted to be Mr. Green Screen. So well, he was excited about the new technology at the time. Yeah. I mean, most movies are all Mr. Green Screen now, unfortunately. Anyways, yeah. P dubs, I've got an hour and 34 minutes. I would yeah. love to hang out with you all night. Mm -hmm. But it's it's late. It's hot. Yep. <laughs> it's <Yep>. hot. <laughs> it's so hot here. I hear you. All right, guys, so moving on to our next topic for the evening, we are going to be discussing. Oh, hey, Mike, you're back. I'm sorry. You can dip out. It's my channel, brother. <laughs> oh, we're on your channel. I don't even know what channel we're on. <laughs> Where did you think we were? <laughs> I thought we were on the Super Game Room Dudes channel. I didn't know what channel we were on. Are we on your channel? Yeah, <laughs> that's hilarious. All right, Mike. It's been an hour and 18 minutes and plus an additional 17. So why don't you get us out of here? Hey, before we go, I just want to say congratulations on your purchase. 
Welcome to the Stern yeah. family. And now that you have it, you'll get all the comments that we've been getting for yeah. the last little while about how there's something going on in the background. And this is part of a huge conspiracy to convince people to buy Stern pinball tables. Oh, yeah. 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 The pin Illuminati. The pin Illuminati. <laughs> the pin Illuminati. The pin Anami. Someone help me and come up with a funny term for that. So, what, like, sometimes people are just people, man. <laughs> it's not yeah. this crazy thing going on where we're secretly working oh. with companies to control the minds. <laughs> like, do you think? Do you think it's they live? Put on your glasses, oh. man, and see if oh. I, I'm an alien person with obey behind me. Oh, uh, I should tell you the funny. So when I called my wife, because a, a major purchase like this, you should yeah probably just at least give the other person a heads up. So I call my wife and she answers and she's at her sewing class because she takes a sewing class. She loves sewing. She goes to these classes to learn to sew and make things. And she answers. She's like, I'm in class right now. I go, I know, but we got to talk like right now. She's like, what's up? I was like, uh, remember how I showed you last night the videos of that Venom pinball machine? She's like, yeah. I was like, I'm thinking about pre-ordering it. She goes, oh, okay, we'll talk about when we get home. I was like, I think about pre-ordering it right now. She goes, but I'm at class. I'm like, table looks cool. There's been coverage of it. I think it looks awesome. I think I want to get it. She goes, okay, that's fine. And I said, okay, I'll talk to you later. She goes, wait, 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 wait. I said, nope, you already gave your blessing. Bye, click. And I hung up. <laughs> I hung up. I hung up and I placed my pre-order. And then I texted her a picture of the pre-order. And she responded with, son of a bitch, but with like smiley faces. So yeah. it's nice. When you are, when uh, there's so many of us uh, out like you guys out there in the chat, where you have your wives or significant others support your hobbies, even though it takes us to the poor house. <laughs> oh. Everybody, everybody, yeah. uh, everybody gives me shit all the time. Like they have no idea. Mm. Like my wife, uh, maybe I've played her up as like a villain in some of these stories, but you guys have no idea how supportive I, I wouldn't be able to do all this stuff have this time to do this stuff, especially with two young kids, uh, have the flexibility to buy all this fun stuff if my wife wasn't just absolutely the tops. So uh, she's a lot more supportive. That's than because she think. came on Super Game Room Dudes that one That's episode right. <laughs> and just torched you. Yeah. It was like one of the best episodes we ever did. She just ripped on you the entire episode. And it made me feel like if I ever come over and have dinner at your house, yeah, she would spend the entire dinner making fun of you. And it would be a great experience for me and her less for you. It's the same way in the bedroom too. She's just constantly <laughs> telling me how bad I am. <laughs> all right, let's get out of here. Mike and no, I are really quickly, friends. really we can talk all night. We can really talk quickly. All night you know how that conversation would have went with me and Lara. If I was like, if she was in class and I called her to tell her I was buying venom. I'd be like, Hey baby, I'm about to buy this venom pinball table. How about me's and you's play some pinball? She goes, wait a minute. I'm in class. I'd say, call me back when you got no class. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's call it a night everybody thank you so much for hanging out thank you so much to b and justin for going out of their way to actually spend their time at comic-con to share it with us here tonight cool to see venom and congratulations p-dubs on your new stern pinball purchase welcome to the family you're gonna see some subliminal messaging coming out to everybody at home now by stern by stern illuminati by stern Anyways, everybody, have a good night. Thanks for joining me on this impromptu stream. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you tomorrow night on Super Game Room Dudes. Get Are ready for this again tomorrow. Super Game Room Dudes tomorrow night. Carl will say something really strange to start the show. Nostalgia will eat a banana very awkwardly throughout the show. Patrick will try to keep composed. And then we'll end the show on the most sourest of notes for no good reason at all. See you tomorrow night on Super Game Room Dudes. That's what I'm talking about. I actually look forward to Friday night so much. Goodbye, everybody. End the show already. <laughs> I'm sure we can go another hour. You gotta so. do this again tomorrow? tomorrow. <laughs> We've been on air all week, Mike. I need a break. <laughs>